Welcome to Health and Wellness. I'm Dr. Jennifer Ashton. As part of Gynecologic Cancer Awareness Month, we are here at the Valley Hospital in Ridgewood, New Jersey to learn all about robotic gynecologic surgery. And we are joined by Dr. Billy Burke, who is a GYN oncologist and an expert in robotic surgery. In talking to patients, what do you tell them are some of the benefits that they could hopefully be expected to achieve if they have a robotic surgical procedure? Right. I think the, the distinction needs to be made in two parts. One is, is that robotic surgery is a type of laparoscopic surgery, so when right. compared to open surgery, absolute patient benefits, shorter hospital stay, faster recovery, less post-operative pain, less requirement for post-operative pain medication. So when it's compared to open, the, the patient benefit is tremendous. Huge. When you ask the question is, how does robotics benefit above and beyond conventional laparoscopy, which is still through the small incisions and you have all those patient benefits, mm -hmm. is then it starts, to, it starts to move into the surgical realm and the, and the surgeon's realm. It's easier for me to operate on more, more complex patients, meaning heavier patients things where you wouldn't be able to reach with conventional laparoscopy. And it's seeing better and moving better, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You see things that you would never see open, or even with conventional camera systems. And how much magnified is what, what you can see robotically? It's 10 times. So 10 times what your vision would be if you were just looking into a person. Okay. Amazing. Right. A patient hearing this who thinks that he or she might be a candidate for robotic procedure should really ask their surgeon what questions. Yeah. I think the most important thing to do is for a patient to ask whether it's robotic or not is what are my surgical options? I want to hear them all. What ones can you do or do you offer? Right. What one do you think is right? And then if it happens to be the robotic surgery or any other procedure for that matter, how many have you done and what is your experience? And I think that's fair. Now, one big myth that I'm sure a lot of patients must ask you, I know they ask me, is I think the term really can mislead people into thinking that you are not here. The robotic system does not move if the surgeon's not at the console. There's emergency stop systems and all of the instruments can be taken out very quickly if there was an emergency. What about some other logistical aspects or facts about this that you think are important for people to know? One, this is a very expensive machine, right? So all hospitals do not have it. Yeah, the system itself is, ex is expensive. The way uh, that you look at it is it's an investment in patient's care. Yes, it's several million dollars, but when you're using it for a tremendous variety of patients and, and, and attempting to you know, redo all open surgeries across all surgical fields, it's well worth the investment. A lot of the insurance companies are adopting it and accepting it as a surgical procedure. It's not a special reimbursement that patients have to feel at risk that they may owe many more thousands of dollars because they're using robotic surgery. Good, good to know. We're gonna take a quick word from our sponsor and be back with more robotic surgery right after the break. This is Da Vinci. And of course, there's no patient here, but you're going to explain to us a little bit about how it works and why it has really revolutionized that some of the procedures that you do. The main component that uh, is actually allowing a certain operator is, is the surgical cart. The other component of the system, which is not so overt, is the camera system, which is a uh, optical system which provides three-dimensional imaging. And the last system, which we'll get a chance to view a little later, is the console or the surgeon's console, which enables the surgeon to operate remotely or away from the bedside. The newer systems consist of four arms. You have the camera arm, which you put the camera into. You have two main operating arms, uh, the right and left arms. These go through small incisions. These are eight millimeter incisions. And then you have a fourth arm if you want to, so you can actually operate with more hands than you traditionally do. So therefore, the operating surgeon actually has three arms, not two. The instruments are, are long, sleek instruments with little tiny scissors and graspers at the end. And all the bedside surgeon does is put it in and connect it. The robot ex accepts it, and you slide it into the belly under direct vision and camera, and then you're ready to operate. So we're just we're gonna go a little bit over the surgical console where uh, the main operating is done from the, the operating surgeon. Basically, everything that's everything that the master is doing for my hands is being translated into the patient's body. We can very nicely tie a little suture if I can grab it. The camera and your arms and an ability to reposition things in the patient's all driven by basically pedals, just like in a car. There's a clutch for the ability to move your arms so the instruments don't move and reset. There's a camera clutch which enables you to move the camera. And then there's different types of energy that we use to complete the surgeries. And we're about 
eight feet from where the patient would We're be. about eight feet, so you're in close contact. There's actually a microphone, so you can actually speak to everybody in the operating room. Usually we're close enough that my partner and I can talk to each other the entire procedure without any difficulty and convey what we need. But for the most part, the surgery is done in silence because everything's right here with what I need to do.